bad against the st starters and how great is the Chargers offensive lineman. I don't care. The, de the, the, the second street defensive line looked beastly. I mean, can we get an amen for, for Contavia Street? Finally, so good to see Contavious on the field and healthy and doing his damn thing. You know, uh, yesterday, he deserves big props. He played an amazing game. And another big props goes to, to Zach Kerr. I want to say he had uh, one sack, maybe two sacks. And I know he had like two or three tackles for loss. That That's huge. And he's exactly what we wanted him to be. We need him to be a run stuffer. Stuff, uh, stu run stuffer. Can't speak today. Um. I know on the podcast that Tim Ryan um, was talking about how there was a play, the play before um, Zach Kerr made made a run stuff that I want to say it was um, Kevin Givens. I want to say, oh, no, know what it was? It was when they called the holding on um, Kevin Givens. That was a hold. That, that legitly was a hold. Um, they were double teaming him, and, hey, he did whatever he had to do you know, to try to keep him off the linebackers, but that that was hold. And so uh, the next play, they try to double team him, uh, Zach Kerr, and Zach Kerr ain't having none of it. And Tim Ryan had pointed that out and was like, that's why you bring Zach Kerr in at 330 pounds. You're not going to be able to move him off the football. Um, you know, Zach Kerr ain't having none of that. And it was just so good to see because – that's why I was so fired up when we signed Zach Kerr because I was like, yes, that's what we need. Obviously, DJ Jones gives you more of a pass rush as well as a run stop, but DJ can't stay healthy. And so now we finally have a player that at least if Javon Kinlaw is not in there or DJ Jones isn't in there, we have a player that at least as far as the run defense isn't con – um, when run defense is concerned, there isn't that much of a drop-off. And you know what? I'm not going to say he's a pass rush beast, but he, he look, I love that back down. He showed a little pass rush uh, wiggle to him when, uh, yeah, he didn't get there, but he batted the ball down, and he was getting held. And so I'm not going to say what I say, Kerry Hyder like I'm not going to say he's going to lead the team in sacks. Let's be real. If anybody leads this team in sacks besides Nick Bosa, um, either somebody had an amazing unforeseen year or we got some concerns over number 97 because we all expect number 97 to lead the team in sacks. Um, although he didn't do it his rookie year. That was Eric Armstead. But, I mean, Nick Bosa should lead the team in sacks. Um, so, no, it's not going to be – Zach Kerr, but sometimes a run stuff is just as important as, you know, a pass breakup or anything. And if a D lineman can give you some batted balls, that, that's even an added bonus. Now, I, I don't want to say that this is a negative report. It, it does have some negative aspects to it, but we got to talk about Ambry Thomas. Now, he did get burned. You know, uh, it was a long completion. I want to say it was in the first quarter. I, I want to say it was on uh, L.A. I almost said San Diego. Um, L.A.'s touchdown drive. But he did give up that big play, and he was burned. And he is really, really grabby. I know on Locked On 49ers today, Eric Crocker was talking about how he's panicking. And you can definitely see that there is some rust but what I liked most about Amory Thomas, because you can work on technique things. The rusting, the more reps he gets, you know, I understand the preseason is wrapping up, but the more reps he gets and more practice time he gets to develop, the rust will fade away and the technique things will be ironed out once he gets, um, you know, some coaching. Or I should say at least continues to get coaching. But what I loved about him, Oh, over um, a certain cornerback that wore number 23 that, that will not be um, named in this podcast, but I'm pretty sure y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, 
we would see, it didn't look like we saw the ebb and flows. And what I mean the ebb of flows is that every Thomas gave up that play. But the very next play, you saw that they ran towards his side and he was right there. He made the tackle. I, I want to say it was either for no gain or possibly like a one, two yard loss. But I saw he, he did not let that play affect him. And that's what got me fired up about Amory Thomas. I was like, all right, bro, I see you. You're not like that cornerback who would let giving up a play affect him the next play and it would start to snowball. I didn't see that with Ambry Thomas. I saw that the next play, he, he was like, hey, that play's behind me. Let me go in and, and put my nose in here and get this run stop. And, and that's what I loved about Ambry Thomas, that mentality, because you can't teach mentality, you know. And so having that mentality is definitely, to me, a very positive sign for Ambry Thomas. And I absolutely love the run they're getting into the preseason. Obviously, you know, you're going you're gonna to have some good plays. You're going to have some bad plays. But, you know, you're learning. And you're learning and you're able to give up those bad plays essentially in a game that doesn't count. And so I think that that's what any coach would want to say is, hey, look, some rookies, you're going to go through some groaning pains, especially rookie cornerbacks. You know, you're going to go through some ups and downs. You're going to give up some plays. But, hey, we need you to go through that so, A, you can develop beyond it. And also, ultimately, we would love for that to happen in a preseason game because ultimately it doesn't hurt anybody. Because you're not going to say it's going to, you know, lower the chance of him making the roster. Every Thomas is going to make the roster. But that is my so-so report on, you know, some positive, some downside. But I want to definitely say, and that with saying uh, uh, positive for Ambry Thomas. Um, I want to go ahead and we're going to get into, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Talano Hufunga. And then we'll take our commercial and then we'll get into our stock up and stock downs. But um, I didn't put Talano Hufunga in my stock up because I, there was, I don't want to say not enough to put him in the stock up category, but he was in the stock up last week and I didn't see anything, you know, that make me jump out of my seat and say, oh, wow, yeah, he's definitely improved, but he didn't get worse. So that ultimately means you improved, I guess, a little bit because you're either getting better or getting worse. But I, I, I didn't see him out of place. I didn't see him give up the big play. And he was still showing the the want to to be able to put his nose in there and mix it up. And I love that. And you know what? It did seem like when he was in there, it, it, to me, it did seem that number 21 might not have been in on the tackle, but he was around the pile. And so that tells me that, that he's, he's around the football. And that's what you want. I... Obviously, if anybody saw anything, please let me know. But I didn't see anything, you know, any glaring pays that cost us or anything like that. So it sounded like he did his job. And, you know, um, tomorrow, um, tomorrow's show, we'll go ahead and tease ahead. I'm going to ask Jason his thoughts on, on you know, if we could see Talano Hufunga, you know, start some games this year. Is it only a matter of time or, or do we need to see more? Um, I'll go ahead and give my thoughts on that tomorrow along with, um, Jason, but definitely love what I'm seeing from just the defense overall as a whole. I mean, fine that a lot of the Chargers starters didn't play yesterday, but, um, we... Still kept pressure on them all game, and I'd love to see that. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about Trey Lance right now. Um, now, he ended up playing in six drives. Um, let me see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. Where is it? I wanted to see. Uh let me see. And, okay, so with Trey, it was definitely good to see him put a touchdown on the board, 
you know, going into the, the, the halftime and, and positive to see that him, you know, execute a two minute drive way better than he did uh, last week. That, that was a good, that's what I wanted to see. You saw the improvements. Obviously, we know that it did not start great. It didn't. Um, you know, after those first drive and everything like that, you know, I, I was saying I was going to put Trey Lance in the stock down. And I was curious at how he would come back. Now, you know, two touchdown drives out of six drives. Um, legendary to see. Love seeing it. Um, happy to see it. We obviously know that Robbie Gold ended up missing. Um, oh, no, it wasn't a field goal that he ended up missing. Um, sorry about that. I was thinking about something else. But I think what you saw is sometimes, and please don't jump down my throat. I'm not comparing Trey Lance to Joe Montana. But what I'm saying is, what to me, what made Joe the greatest, one of the things that made Joe the greatest quarterback to ever live was his ability to have a shitty game but still come out with the win and make the plays when necessary. And, you know, not start off the greatest, but, you know, finish the greatest and still get that victory. And not play so bad that you take the team out of the game. And I think that's what we saw from Trey Lance yesterday. And that is definitely an encouraging sign. Hey, you didn't start off great. Well, how how how, how do you react after not starting off great and not starting off great and you know being able to rebound? Being able to not play so bad that you, you know, how do you rebound after throwing that pick? He's not been a lot of interested. And so we're starting to see now it's a preseason game. It was against the backups, probably. You know, this is a nature. Okay, fine. I'm not ready to put Trey Lance in the Hall of Fame or anything like that, but we can only judge what we see and what's been presented to us so far. And what's been seen presented to us so far. You're starting to get your season negative, but you're getting negative and all allowing you to have other issues because you're how he, you know, overcoming adversity and things of that nature. So, we're in sympathy. I know I talked about it a, a little bit earlier in the show, but, you know, kind of a shame that we didn't know Jimmy. Back. We know Jimmy does bounce back to throw in a pick, but very excited about what I'm going to get. Not enough to say he should definitely score, but I'm not being encouraged by what we've seen today. He looks like he can, you know. Be good NFL quarterback. He looks like, like you're not. This is about like seeing if Trey Lance doesn't have it. And I'm going to say that he has it all, but you can see that he has some of it, definitely. And it's not that he doesn't have it. And that's very positive. Sometimes. So break, and when we get back, we're going to do some stock up. And um, stuck down.
All right, and we're back. Um, you know, I really hope that y'all all, everybody was not just staring at a black screen right now. They really do show ads when we do that. I wonder if it's just like the replay that shows ads or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead and get into some stock up and stock down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with some stock up. I guess keep it a little positive vibe because it's Victory Monday. Um, okay, so stock up. We're going to go D'Amador Lenore. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, I loved his pass breakup because the technique was brilliant. He, he, he did grab a little bit, but it wasn't too much where it was going to get a, a plague, a material material effect, I think is what they call it. But um, his technique was perfect, and you saw his aggressiveness, and you, you just saw everything that you were going to want to see from an outside corner. Um, a lot of people said that he was a nickel. I know Eric Crocker thinks that he's a nickel. Um, that's probably ideally what you would want him to be. But if he can show that he's not – totally out of place at an outside corner, I think that's even better. Um, that's a versatility. And honestly, uh, honestly, obviously that's what you're really looking for in a fifth-round pick. Hey, if you can show versatility to play nickel and outside, obviously, okay, we'll be okay with you playing better at nickel, but you can do serviceable as an outside corner. Man, that's that's... That's the best way to stick around on the team as a fifth-round pick, you know, in the secondary. And I believe I did see him on some special team snaps and everything like that. Didn't have a perfect game, but um, I, I know I saw on Twitter was something like he's been targeted six times and given up a passer rating of zero. I mean, um, not to give away too, too much. But it might be to him and Tarno Hufunga that I'm looking for to be my rookies to watch this year. And it might just strictly boil down to um, who I think is going to get more playing time and can make more of an immediate impact. Um, but definitely stock up on Talanoa, or Talanoa Hufunga, uh, Diamador Lenore. Another, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go stock down. And I know this might get me um, some hate and everything like that, but I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to go stock down on Brandon Ayuk because I, I've talked a lot about how I want to see what pra uh, translates from practice to translate into the game. And uh, Brandon Ayuk's had an amazing camp. And I know people are going to say they're going to take more from practice than you are from a game, but that hasn't transferred on to from the practice field to the game. I mean, he had the a critical drop last week, obviously has the, the drop for Jimmy, bounces off his hands and, uh, you know, gets picked off. And I know I, I broke that down early in the show, so I'm not going to spend a lot, a lot of time with it. But, yeah, I need more. For Brandon Ayuk. And I'm, I'm not saying he's a bust. I'm not saying that he's not going to be good. He's not going to be a Paul Bull caliber receiver or whatever. But right now, I'm going to put him in the stock down category. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll do another uh, stock down. Robbie Gold. And I've talked about it. And I've really tried to brush it off. And really tried my hardest to kind of be like, Robbie's going to be all right. You know, yeah, he's getting older, and I wouldn't necessarily trust him from, you know, 45-plus. But you're starting to see missed extra points, and that's concerning. You know, uh, Kyle Shanahan, they showed him um, after – 
the uh, Miss P E T B A T P E T uh P A T and he did not look happy at all. And so um let me look up Robbie Gold's contract. Um, I want to see something. He signed a two-year deal. Okay, here we go. Um, let me see if I can read more into this. He'll be a free agent in 2023. Um, damn, he'd be a five and a half, a little over five and a half million dead cap hit, uh, next year. Um, oh, they gave him everything guaranteed as signing. It was fully guaranteed. He has a $2 million over a little over two and a half, 2.6 mil cap hit this year. So basically, the cap hit would be the same as the dead cap if we cut him next year. You know, we shall see. But um, yeah, I think that obviously, I don't want to have more than a little bit of influence on signing up for a running quarterback. But uh, you know, a, a kicker whose leg ain't as strong and it's starting to show that maybe, you know, the wheels are starting to come off a little bit. And um, a running quarterback that can now get you a fourth and three. If you're on that border when you think you're, you know, teetering on the range of Robbie Gold, yeah, um, I'm not, you, you'd be a fool to think if that didn't go into Kyle Shanahan's mind. Um, you know, I think sticking with Robbie Gold this year might have very well been like, well, who's available that's better? You're not going to draft a kicker, especially considering, you know, the amount of capital and everything we gave up to get Trey Lance. We weren't going to draft a kicker. I mean, were there any, you know, kickers available in free agency that would have been a clear upgrade? I mean, I can't think of any. They were available this year. We'll talk about next year later on down the road. You know, we did so much off-season talk that I'm excited just to be actually be able to talk about a season and not so much off-season talk. We'll have plenty of time to get in the off-season talk after the season. You know, we're, we're very – we don't do this just during the season. So we grind here at Nine or Faithful Radio. But um, – so – Definitely, you know, going to be curious to see what that kicking situation is going down. Um, stock up to Michael Hasty. I know I said that I was going to give it to him. I was not impressed with him when I saw in uh, week one, but definitely was better in week two. Ultimately, I do think that Wayne Gallman uh, gets it. Just because I feel that they're going to want some veteran presence in the running back room. I mean, you figure what? Raheem Sherman, uh, Mitchell, Gallman or Hasty. Uh, right now, I would take Gallman. Another thing that's curious, I'm wondering if they'll do, if they'll go to Gallman or Hasty and say, hey, we're going to IR stash. Um, Elijah Mitchell this year. So don't sign with anybody. We we got to make sure that he can go through. Um, you know, so he can, we'll, we have to have him initially put him straight on the IR and nobody has an opportunity to claim him. But as soon as we put him on IR and free up the roster spot, we will go ahead and um, 
sign one of y'all back. And then, you know, maybe you deal with that with, you know, who to cut or whatever or what to do when Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, comes back. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Niners try to do something like that with Elijah Mitchell. Um, you know, and maybe you could see that he uh, can definitely not have to clear waivers and, and you don't risk somebody uh, picking him up. All right, we got about 10 more minutes left. We can go about 56 minutes. Uh, I believe so. Hold on, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, 56 minutes. Um, so, where are we at time wise? Okay. About 10 more minutes. So, we'll go ahead. We'll run one more commercial break. We'll finish with stock up, stock down, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get up out of here. All right, sorry about that, y'all. Didn't know we were back. Anyway, um, so my last stock up, stock down, I'm going to go ahead and give a stock up to Jalen Moore. Um, I didn't really hear anything bad from him 
all game. And, and maybe, you know, when I go watch the game back again, I'll see some things that, you know, um, I don't want to say concern me, but some things that, um, you know, make me feel, you know, not as great. But, you know, o Lyman are the type of thing where if you don't talk about them, that means they did their job. And I don't remember thinking, damn it, Jalen Moore. So that means he probably did a good job. And you know what? Yet again, somebody we, we planned at a different position for showing versatility. And so if he can come in and play tackle, you know, and be our, our swing tackle and be a backup guard, I mean, that's the way you make a roster, you know, and ultimately that's what we you want from a fifth round pick. Um, so let me see. We got about seven more minutes. So that's my last stock up, stock down. Um, let me see. Let's get prepared to raid the channel. Let's see who's on. Oh, Grant Cohn's on. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and we'll raid Grant Cohn when we're ready to raid. But um, if he's still on. But yeah, definitely encouraged by everything I've saw. You know, any day you get a victory and it's Victory Monday, it's a good Monday. You know, and definitely some Trey Lance recovered and showed that he can start off a game not the greatest but still you know bounce back and lead the team to two touchdown drives and you just see the throws i mean that throw to travis benjamin oof, that was a saucy throw and the way he looked Held to say everybody's going through progressions. Nah, he was looking at the safety off. I know I'm going the ball. I'm going to look the safety off. Then, wow, throw it right there. Poetry in motion. Sort of like Hemingway. Time to put another Super Bowl on the resume. Shout out to the homie Jose Santana. Um, from the legendary Santana family. Um, oh, wow. This dude almost busted his mouth open right now. That would have been funny. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this process. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. That definitely was not a good thing. Um, I closed the, the page. Let me see if there's anything else that we need to see. I know Mo Hurst and Kendricks left the game. Um, Celino Clemente went down in the fourth quarter with a back injury. The Ferny are waiting on the offensive lineman's x-ray. And cornerback Alexander Myers left the game with concussion. Um, doesn't seem like there's any other updates from the team. Obviously, Debo's tight glute wasn't an issue because he was out there. Um, finished the game one of seven for, I think it was like, or seven of eight for like 94 yards or something. Five total sacks by the D. That's excellent. Maiden took the, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's it. Let me see. I'll allow this to load up a little bit more, but I think that Yeah. Uh, second theory of the third quarter. Um, yeah, so I think 
that should be about it. Um, let me see. Just going through the last little bit of notes. No, I read that one. That. Yeah, we should go. Obviously, we'll know some roster cut downs. Um, tomorrow will be coming. It's not going to be a good day tomorrow for for five Niners. Um, maybe Kendricks, you know, kind of just signed, and then the team ends up, you know, taking you away the next day. That's not good, or next week. That's not good. But um, let's see, where are we at? Yeah. Okay. So um, we want to remind everybody that you could join us for the live stream of all. All our shows, go to twitch.tv forward slash Niner Faithful Radio to join us. You can also hook up your Amazon Prime through Amazon or Prime Gaming to subscribe to your favorite Twitch channel, Niner Faithful Radio, for free. You will have to do it every month, but it doesn't cost you any money. For the Faithful, by the Faithful, pre-launch sale is happening right now. We got six days left to save 20% off of all our designs. Go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com forward slash shop for all the details and check out all our designs and save your 20%. Go to SeatGiant.com, use the promo code NinerFaithfulRadio, all one word, to save on all your theater, concert, and sporting event tickets, as well as help out the show. Get your officially licensed Niner gear by using our affiliate link available in the description. It costs you no more, and it really does help out the show. Go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com forward slash subscribe. To see all the places you can subscribe to the show. Also follow us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr at Niner Faithful Radio. And on Twitter at Niner Faithful R. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Go Niners. Legendary to get a dub. Please stay tuned in for our raid. See you tomorrow. Till then, faith, love, and happiness. Go Niners. All right. And now we're going to raid. Right here. Start raid. And right now, I think that all right. We'll see y'all. See ya.